In Mark or John chapter 12, let's look there if you have your Bibles with me this morning. And I want us to read verses 1 through 8. He said there, Then Jesus, six days before the Passover, came to Bethany, where Lazarus, which had been dead, whom he raised from the dead. Now, they made a, him a supper. I like that. And Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with him. Then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly, and anointed the feet of Jesus, and wiped his feet with the hairs of her head. And the house was filled with the odor of the ointment. I love that. Then saith one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, which should betray him, why was not this ointment sold for 300 pence and given to the poor? This he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. Uh, don't you just love the way the Lord just don't patty cake around? He did, he's a thief. <laughs> Amen. That's what he is. He's a thief. And so... He said, he's a thief and he had the bag and bear what was put therein. In other words, he was a treasurer. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying hath she kept this. For the poor always you have with you, but me you have not always. Amen. Now I want you to turn over in Mark chapter number 14. We want to read right there. Chapter 14, verse number 1 through 9. It's really the same story, but it's amazing how you get different, uh, different uh, captions from the heart of the different writers. And two days, after two days was the feast of the Passover and of unleavened bread, and the chief priests and the scribes sought how they might take him by craft and put him to death. Talking about Jesus. But they said, not on the feast day, lest there be an uproar of the people. Isn't that kind of them? And being in Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at meat, there came a woman having an alabaster box of ointment of spikenard, very precious. And she broke the box and poured it on his head. Now, I want you to notice now that John had said that this woman's name was Mary and that Mary broke the box and poured it on his feet and wiped his feet with the hairs of her head. Uh, Mark is seeing it as it's poured on his head. Now, you got to understand this box was about a pound in weight. That's a lot of oil, if you don't but know that. That's a lot of oil. And it was very costly. It was very expensive. And, and Mark sees that it's poured on his head and I have no doubt somebody said well there's a discrepancy in the word right there I don't believe that I believe that what uh, John caught notice of was the fact that the oil as it dripped onto her feet this woman was so humbled by this she wiped her, with her hair from her own head the oil that had dripped down on his feet but I believe it started on his head. Are y'all are y'all with me? So that I don't buy there's no discrepancy, but I, I just wanted to point that out. What I see here is that you have do two different writers that were there and they noticed two different aspects of the same act. And there were some that had indignation within themselves and said, Why was this waste of the ointment made? Now John told us who that was. Mark was being a little bit more kind, amen. And um, for it might have been sold for more than 300 pence and have been given to the poor. And they murmured against her. They murmured against her. And I want you to understand, if you underline your Bible, underline that. Because you're going to need to know that. If I forget that, you're going to understand what that is really all about. Why would they murmur against her? It's her oil. Are you all with me? It's her oil. It's her, it's her expense. It's her time. Why would they complain about her? <laughs> you can always tell where somebody's heart's at by what they complain about. Woo wee. Sister Pack, we may be good we're leaving town this afternoon. 
Jesus said, let her alone, verse number 6, why trouble ye her? She hath wrought a good work on me. I got that underlined in my Bible. For ye have the poor with you always, and whensoever ye would or you may do good, do them good, but me ye have not always. She hath done what she could. I love that. She is come aforehand to anoint my body for the burying. Verily I say unto you, wheresoever this gospel shall be preached throughout the whole world, this also that she has done shall be spoken of for a memorial of her. And I, lo I, I love that. I, I love that. Amen. I want to talk to you this morning on breaking your alabaster box. Amen. Breaking your alabaster box. Man. Now the scriptures that show us that what the Lord expects out of us, whether we realize that or not, I, 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 you know, we can't, we can't live up to something if we don't know what it is that God wants out of us. And so God is always very plain about this, and it doesn't make any difference if we're pastor, deacon, uh, a teacher, the young, the old, the rich, the poor. We all have a message here that God is speaking to us relative to our relationship with him. He give us his thoughts, Jesus did, on what this woman has done. And in verse number 8 uh, is where he tells us what his thoughts were. The others had given their opinion. They complained. They murmured about it. They act like they were concerned about the poor folks, but in reality they were not. Notice as she breaks the box, they complain, saying, why all the waste? Uh, this, this, uh, this is more than a year's salary. This... This is a lot of finance. This is a lot of money that could be put in the bag to be helping the poor, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But Jesus, in verse number 8, he gives his opinion, and in so doing, he shows us, you and I, what he expects out of every follower of, her, of his, everybody who claims the name of Jesus, and I, I believe that. And I want to start out uh, this morning by just noticing something here because, uh, and I think it's important that we get this. It's important important that we recognize this. This is a message that deals with our, uh, the, our realm of service to the Lord. Now, every one of us that name the name of Christ, we're called to a life of service in some way, form, or shape, form, or fashion. That is what God called us to. Not all of us are workers in the church, but all of us are servants of the Lord, no matter where we are. If you're a doctor, if you're a lawyer, if you're a truck driver, if you're a fry cook, it doesn't make any difference. If you're a taxi cab driver, it doesn't make any difference. If you're a child of God, you are called to service, and everything that we do needs to be in our hearts and in our minds that I am doing this as a service unto the Lord. Yes, you're going to make your living doing that. You're going to raise your family doing that. But it really makes a lot of difference whenever we begin to understand that while I'm doing this and there are good days doing it and there are bad days. It doesn't make any difference. Again, what your job is, amen, it, it doesn't make any difference what you do for a living. You're going to have good days at it and you're going to have bad days. Contrary to what a lot of folks may think, the pastor it, there's a lot of good days but there's also a few bad days that come along with that. Are you with me? So all of us face that. All of us live that in our life. Amen. All of us uh, deal with it. Not too long ago, uh, Sister Becky was talking to us about and had us to pray about some bad times that she was experiencing on a job that she absolutely relishes and that she loves. So you got to get that in your heart. Just because you're having a bad day today, keep on living because the sun will come out tomorrow. Would you shout a good amen? to that. Everything that we do, if we do it as a service unto the Lord, then we begin to understand what it is that God is asking of us. He said, first of all, he said, she has done what she could. I love that. Amen. I I like that. I've seen individuals, I've known pastors that is uh, trying to fill positions and we got positions that we need filled and it's it's a burden on the pastor's heart uh, to find somebody to occupy these various ministries that don't just do it because it's something that has to be done but they do it because they want to do it. They do it because they want to serve God in that. They do it because God has placed that on their heart. Somebody hear what I'm saying? What a blessing that that is and what an honor that that 
that is. But she did what she could. Amen. A lot of folks is pressured into doing something that they never should have done to start with. And what God is pointing out to us here this morning is you do what you can. Hallelujah. You do what you can with what you have. Mm. Oh, Lord, help me, Jesus. Now, God expects us to pour, not just a portion out of our lives. Uh-huh. You know what would have happened if she'd have just broke the top off of that box and just poured an ounce or so on there and just anointed him with an ounce of that? Everything left in the box would have come to nothing. Because once it's opened, you've got to use it. Because if you don't use it, then it's going gonna, it's gonna to waste. It's going to ruin. It's not going to be worth anything. Are y'all with me this morning? And so that's kind of the way it is with our life. Whenever you come to Christ and you give the Lord your life, give it all to him. Amen. Don't hold anything back. And when we hold something back, it ruins. It ruins. It ruins us. It ruins our testimony. It hinders us in our service to God. Somebody said, oh, you just want to know about all of my skeletons. No, I've got skeletons of my own. I don't have to know nothing. But I'm here to tell you, you've got to relinquish those skeletons and you've got to forgive yourself those skeletons and and you've got to move beyond what's going on in your past. And you've got to give it all to Jesus because whatever you hold back will hinder your walk and your service with God. When I first came here, I preached a message about forgiveness. I believe there's anything in the body of Christ that hinders the body of Christ from being what we need to be in this generation today. It is unforgiveness in the hearts of the believers. I believe that. I had a lady met me in the foyer of the church and she said to me, she said, you got all over my toes this morning. I said, well, I'm sorry. I was aiming for your heart. Would you say amen right there? And she said, well, I, I'll tell you, I understand what you're saying. I believe what you're saying, but I'm just not ready uh, to deal with that. And I said, well, that's between you and the Lord. I just, yeah, I'm just the messenger. I'm the paper boy. Somebody say amen. I just deliver the message. What you do with it, when you hear it, it's between you and the, and the Lord. You can walk around with bitterness and unforgiveness and, and unforgiving of yourself, unforgiving others, and it'll hinder you. It'll drag you down, and you'll never know what it is to do what you can for the work of the kingdom of God. Make, make an excuse for it, but it never does. But God expects all of it. Not just a few sprinkles, ladies and gentlemen. He wants you to pour out the entirety of your box of your life on Him. This is what real service is really all about. You don't hold anything back. That's the reason the Lord said, count the cost before you start the journey. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Back many years ago, when I, I had a real good job, I was working at the tissue mill in Crossett, and I had a job at that time in, in mid-early early 80s. I was making like uh, $13 and 40-something cents on days, and then I got more for evenings and got more. Uh, my insurance cost me 97 cents a week. My kids didn't cost me nothing. I was a blessed man. I ain't lying to you. I, Amen. Uh, I, <laughs> I won't say that. I'll go somewhere. I'll go on. But I, I was going to say, I, there's been times I'd have sold them a lot less than 97 cents. But be that as it may, I, I, said, it, I said it after I said I wouldn't, didn't I? I I'm sorry, Dwayne and Stephanie. I really didn't mean it. Don't send me no bad stuff. I love my kids. And, I, and they gave me my grandkids, which is the greatest thing they ever done. But be that as it may, I'm going to just tell you this morning that uh, we were a blessed person, and I remember in my mind when I was going to get ready to go off into the ministry and pastor, I knew that I was going to take a huge cut in pay, and I knew that it was a, a decision. My superintendent said, you better think about this long and hard because there's people scratching at that gate out there to get in here and get your job, and when you walk out, it's over. There's no coming back. And I went and I told, I told my wife, I'm going to give him my two weeks notice today. That was on Monday, whenever he come in. All day Monday, I'd see him out there in the warehouse and I wouldn't give it to him. And I, I didn't say anything. I went home that night. My wife said, what did the superintendent say? I said, I didn't tell him. She said, why didn't you tell him? I said, because I'm scared. I got a wife. I got two babies to take care of. I'm scared. I'm just being honest with you this morning. And so I went back Tuesday, and I was going to tell him on Tuesday, and I couldn't tell him on Tuesday. I wound up telling him that Friday. 
which meant I spent one of the two weeks notice that I give him being afraid to pour out my box. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You see, Sister Carol, I knew that it was going to be hard. I knew that it was going to be difficult. I knew that I was not going to be around my mom and my dad and, and my stepdad and my brothers and my sisters. I knew that people that I was close to all of my life, I was not going to be able to be around them and spend time with them. There wasn't a day went by that I didn't go by and see my mom. There wasn't a time that went by that, that I didn't have the opportunity to share a life with my family. And my wife, the same thing. But oh, our children not going to be around their grandparents and around their cousins and around them. They're going to be off with us doing whatever it is that God is leading us to do. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm here this morning to tell you that when I made my decision to pour it all out on the feet of the Lord, my life changed. Would somebody hear what I'm saying? I said it changed. In that moment, in that instance time, it changed. And now I could stand alongside of her, Mary, and I can say, God, I did what I could. Amen. During one of the low times of our ministry, I told my wife, I said, I think I'm about to die. And she said, oh, you're too young to die. I said, no, this is killing me. I, I, I mean, this load is more than I can carry. Brother Doug made mention of it. I said, it's so heavy on me. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. And she said, well, uh, she said, what do you want me to do if you do die? And I'm thinking, oh God, that ain't what I need to hear. I've been putting up with her for 46 years. I'm teasing. And I told her, I said, you can put on my headstone, he tried. You understand what I'm saying? You ever feel that way? I'm at the point now, I don't care if she puts nothing on there. It don't make no difference now. Are you, are you understanding what I'm saying? I don't know what you would put on there if you would write my epitaph. All that's talking this morning from Brother Doug and Sister Jenny. I'm sitting out there thinking, that sure is a lot of sugar for a nickel. Amen. And I'm grateful for every bit of it. And I'm thankful for it. And we work and we try. And we give everything that we know to give. And, we, and that's just the way that we are. That's what we've always done. Because it's not just for Lake Hamilton. It is for the kingdom that we work. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. And so I want to be able to say he did what he could. And then the perfect service is notice in verse number six. He said that she had did what she could, but she didn't just do it anywhere. He said she done it on me. I love that. I love that. You see, whatever it is that you're doing, Brother Son. <laughs> Amen. Thank you, brother. I'm just caught off guard because Brother Son is, men don't normally do that. The ladies do that. Brother Son has got my respect even more so. What a blessing. You understand what I'm saying? Whatever it is that we do is we do it under the Lord. Are, are you, you sing a song, sing it as under the Lord. You teach a class, teach it as under the Lord. Let me ask you a question. Would you want Jesus to stand up and testify about your service to him that you've done what you could, first of all, and that you've done it on him? Y'all remember back in the day, we used to have workers in the secular work that was so lazy they ought to have to back up to pick up the check. Anybody ever worked with somebody like that? Had to back up to the pay, pay window to get their check because they just, they spent more time hiding from work than they tried to do the work. Y'all don't, don't, come on. Are y'all here? Hello. <laughs> well, he said, let her alone. Why do you criticize her, seeing she hath done a good work on me? Now, this is a picture of the real service that he wants for us, doing what she can for the Lord, doing what I can for Jesus. Amen. Now, I've said something the other day to my dad. My dad talked about being in my church in, back in the 90s. And uh, back, no, I'm sorry, in 2000 and I was out in South Louisiana, but we spent 2000 over here on the other side of town. And, and Sister Mary and Sister Becky, they've talked about 
uh, Sister Becky and my wife talked about how that we're not the same and I'm not the same. I do things now that I didn't used to do and I was always so grim and so I had that expression, you know. You, you got to look like you're sucking on sour grapes all day if you're going to be a preacher and all that, blah, blah, blah. Well, I just, I just made a, I turned a corner. I said, I'm going to like what I'm doing. I'm going to enjoy what I'm doing. I'm going to laugh. I'm going to, I'm going to have a good time. I'm going to tease my people. I'm going to love my folks. I'm just going to get in and have church. Somebody say amen right now. Are y'all, are y'all, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because everything that we do, we do under the Lord. And the Lord said, I know what's in your heart. I understand what you're doing. I know what's happening in your life. And since then, I sing when I feel like singing. Somebody said, but pastor, you can't sing. I don't care. I don't care. I don't care that you don't think I can sing. I don't care that you don't think I'm a good preacher. I don't care that you think I do what I do because I want to be seen a man. I do what I do because I love Jesus and I want him to know how much that I love him. (laughs) Mm. I got news for y'all, every one of y'all. Y'all want to hear me sing good? You come listen to me outside my bathroom door while I'm in the shower. Well, maybe not. But I sound good in the shower. Amen? Y'all seen old Shaq on that commercial that he's on? I I don't remember the commercial. Old Shaq's in the shower. Man, he sounds like an angel up in there singing. Then he gets out and his whole pitch, he can't carry a tune in the bucket. And them guys are looking at him like, wow, what's happening here? That's the way it is. I'm sorry. That's just how it is. Are are y'all with me this morning? Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Some, some of y'all don't sound like Jay Bird. Somebody hear what I'm saying. Some of y'all don't sound like Tweety Bird. But you sing anyhow. And I love it when you sing. I love it when you worship. I love it when you praise God. Because we're doing as unto Him. And we're doing what we can. You see, ladies and gentlemen, you ain't got to worry about doing what I do. And I ain't got to worry about doing what you do. You've got your lane. I've got my lane. Everybody can't be good looking like Brother Bumgardner is. Was that okay, Brother Bumgardner? I always give Brother Bumgardner a hard time. So I thought I'd compliment him today. And he's he's about to have a stroke because I'm I'm complimenting him. (laughs) Oh, it's fun serving Christ. It's fun living for God, ladies and gentlemen. It's it's fun to laugh together and cry together and rejoice together. Hallelujah. Man, you want to have a good time, you come help us sell fireworks next year. I'm telling you, that's the craziest bunch of folks down there you've ever seen in your life. But oh, we eat good and we have good times of laughter and joy and all of that stuff comes along with it. And if you're real good, we'll let you go to Russellville with us to pick it up and you can buy the fish next time. Now, have you ever wondered, ladies and gentlemen, what our reactions would have been if we'd have been there? The mentality that those folks had still prevails in the church world today. It seemed illogical. It seemed logical, if you will, that they should have sold uh, this for the poor. And yet she's pouring it out on the Lord. Uh, He came for the poor, and yet he's allowing this waste to be poured out on him. God would have us understand that she's done what she could, and so do you, and so do I. We should have that. Her love and her devotion went to Jesus. It it, it was the epitome of service, not somebody else. She didn't pour it out, if you will, on the preacher. She didn't pour it out on mom or dad. She didn't pour it out on the church, the church or the poor. She didn't pour it out on anybody but on the Lord. The secret was on Jesus, ladies and gentlemen, because if you give it unto Christ, you have given to the least of these. Would you say amen to that? Oh, if you give him your life, the poor is going to be touched. Hallelujah. If you give him your life, those that are hurting are going to be touched. Those that are wounded are going to be touched. If you give him your life, you'll be able to touch people that you never dreamed that you would touch. Amen. <laughs> now, Brother Doug was talking the other day, and I concur with everything that he said. As much as Brother Doug loves me, I love him right back. Amen. And Sister Brenda came in here last 
Sunday morning and interrupted our closer. We, was, we thought we was going to beat the Baptist to the McDonald's last week. And it didn't happen. She came in and God just done a tremendous work. And Brother Doug this week, Brother Doug this week was talking to her and he said, I'm going to tell you, you don't know how many people. You don't know how far reaching this is going to be. I had somebody contact me this morning and said, I want to see that service from last week. I had people watched it, and my daughter called me from South Louis and said, Daddy, that was unbelievable. I said, I know, baby. I've never seen anything like it. I've said, I've seen folks come in at the tail end of things, but they never went to the altar, and they never surrendered. They never gave God their life. They never gave him their hurts and their pains and their woes and all of that. Sister Brenda came in and done that. Would y'all shout amen? I'm telling you, she was blessed. I was blessed. And the church was blessed. And the Holy Ghost was honored. Would you shout a good amen? Woo! Hallelujah. Ah, we Pentecostal folks around here. Somebody say amen. amen. We believe in the Holy Ghost moving. I tell you, if you let the Holy Ghost get involved in the situation, you give what you've got to the Lord and you'll do it as unto God. And God will be able to say, you've done what you could. Hallelujah. You may not have done what Brother Pack done. You may not have done what Brother Allen done. You may not have done what Sister Carol done. But you've done what you've done. You've done what you could unto God. Lord, how long have I been going? Oh, Jesus, i got to hurry up and quit. Now, I, I, want to, I want us to think about something. Mary's thinking compared to everybody else's was, uh, her thought was, what can I do? I just can't love him. I just can't say, well, I love you. I love you. I had a Cajun woman in my church down south Louisiana. She had come up to me one time. She'd come out of an abusive situation. And she'd come up to me and she said, Pastor, love is as love does. Love is an active word. Mary, Mary got that. She understood that. Huh? Now, I took my wife last night to something I'd never done in my life. I wasn't really thrilled about it. I, I wasn't really impressed, but... I wanted to impress her. Y'all know what we did on our 46th anniversary? We went to Murray's Dinner House in Little Rock and seen Shrek. That's what I thought, Shrek. I get inside there. The meal was pretty good. Most folks would like the meal. And I found out this morning there was a young lady here present whom will rename, will remain nameless. She wouldn't eat nothing that they had. That's okay. Teenagers are that way. Y'all know y'all are weird. Teenagers, y'all are weird. Huh? Who wouldn't like mashed potatoes and gravy? Meatloaf. Salad. Huh? Y'all are y'all with me? But I'm sitting there and I'm thinking about this. My sweetheart's across the table from me, and I'm thinking, 46 years together, and this is the best I can come up with. Shrek. I'm a blessed man, Brother Kenny. I really am. I'm a blessed man. She, and, and she said, I, I enjoyed it, baby. I, enjoyed it. Now, I don't know if she really did or not, but we had a good time. And are y'all hearing what I'm saying? She, I mean, why couldn't it have been, huh? There you go. Romeo, Juliet or something. Shrek, a big, green, ugly monster ogre type guy I did what I could sister pack <laughs> see that's what Mary's thought was Mary's thinking was I can't just say that I love him I've got to show him that I love him and there's something in me Mary said that will just not let me hold on to what I got I've just got to pour it out on the Lord Jesus Christ. And so today, prove your love to the Lord. Don't just sit there and say, I love you, Jesus. Show him that you love him. Express your love to him. If you love me, he said, keep my commandments is what he said. Right. Love always is extravagant, ladies and gentlemen. My wife and I got married. I bought a I bought a used ring for her. It was the best I could do. I wasn't but 17. I didn't have no money. I had more than I thought I did, but I didn't have a lot. 
and I bought her a used ring. I had to buy me a new one because they didn't have one my size in the used section. Amen. With no diamonds, nothing. It was just a white gold band. The one of which I've outgrown a long time ago. And she's bought me other rings, but I don't care about none of them like I do that one. And I know the ladies do. My wife's got a ring that I got her, and I designed it myself with a jeweler standing there, and he put it together like, and I love it. I love it because I was able to do a little better. Years, what, how many years? 25? You've had that ring that long? I guess you're thinking it's time for another, huh? Oh. Getting deep up in here, brother. Yeah. Now let, let me just close by just giving you the picture. Ma Martha and Mary were there present in the house of Simon the leper. Lazarus was there. If you go a little further in reading the scriptures, you find out there were a lot of Jews that were there. They were contemplating the killing of Christ. But they also wanted to kill Lazarus because since Jesus raised him from the dead. Now get this. The devil didn't like it. And they, the Bible explicitly, and I never noticed this before until I read the text this morning. It's not in the text. It's just a couple of verses beyond the text. And the Jews were present there trying to catch an opportunity to accuse Christ to cost him his life. But they had it in their mind they wanted to kill Lazarus as well, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Because of Lazarus, get this now, because of his testimony. <laughs> what testimony? I once was dead, but now I'm alive. Hallelujah. Jesus raised me from the dead. Somebody said, well, I can't test. Yes, you can. If you were dead in your trespasses and sin, you've got the same testimony that Lazarus had, and you need to be giving it out everywhere that you go. I once was lost, but now I'm found. Was dead, but now I'm alive. Hallelujah. And Jesus, the Bible said that they wanted to do away with him because there were many Jews that left their religion and started following Jesus. Did you hear what I said? <laughs> now you got to get this picture in your mind. Here, here it is. Martha and Mary are there. And no doubt, uh, Martha is serving. Are y'all with me? Because that's what she does. She serves. I thank God for that, ladies. All right? I, I thank God for that. Uh, she's, a, she's the efficient one. She's in the kitchen taking care of others and doing for others. Jesus said to Martha one time, said, Martha, you're cumbered about with so many things. On another occasion, he told her that. It's such a burden to you, Martha. You need, you need to let every, you need to, uh, you let everything get you down. You let everything burden you. You are cumbered about. You're bothered with so many things in your life. You, you just carry the, this responsibility that I never asked you to carry. Martha is always busy being hospitable. I like that. I like going to Martha's house, sitting at Martha's table. Are you hearing me? Eating Martha's vittles because she's always got a nice table spread. Anybody can testify to that? And that's a beautiful thing, ladies and gentlemen. In the natural, it seemed like Martha did the best work. It looked like she was the most useful always getting things done. But Jesus said she was worried about so many things while Mary chose the better part. Mary come up there, ladies and gentlemen, she poured out what she had because she had to do something to express her heart to Christ. Lazarus was alive and well because Jesus had raised him from the dead. And I, I just can't do only what Martha's doing. I've got to go another step. 
That, ladies and gentlemen, makes the difference. Whatever your service is, whatever your heart is to do, do it as unto Christ. Pour your life out unto him. Amen? And let Jesus bless what you do.